Morning, sixth graders. It is language time, lesson 164. Should be on page 256. And it's talking about conjunctions. You guys have learned about conjunctions many times. And, but, for, nor, or, yet. Um, they're using them in just a little bit more of an advanced way today, but they're joining, um, they're joining sentences, they're joining groups of words or phrases. And when they talk about phrases, they're talking about a prepositional phrase. A conjunction is a word used to connect words or groups of words. The following conjunctions are called coordinating conjunctions and the ones I just said. They also have a box in the middle of the page that is great to memorize, um, but you may already know them. If you join words, maybe we just say, um, we have cats and dogs, okay? This is just words, it's a conjunction joining words. All right, if we say, um, we went in the house, no, I shouldn't have a comma, and down the steps. Okay, this is a two prepositional phrases. Joined by a conjunction. Those are phrases. The uh, conjunction is used to join the phrases. Okay, we know how it is when you use a conjunction to join two sentences. We've learned that's called a compound sentence. So conjunctions are used in different ways. And what they want you to do on think A, you are to underline the conjunction. I circled mine, but you are to underline yours. And be sure to underline both parts of a correlative conjunction. Okay, um, so sometimes they use a sentence saying, um, neither Cody nor Dylan did all their work. We're going to try and work on that, but we're going to use them, all right? Conjunctions. What they're wanting you to remind you about, watch for sentences that use two sets, or a set of conjunctions, neither and nor. Our first, our first instinct is to do just that one. Okay, watch for sentences that th they're going to throw in two of them. That's kind of what they're introducing you to now. It might be neither, nor, either, or, both, uh, and, and not only, but also. Those are all conjunctions they're going to start using. All right, on number one, on the bottom of page 256, many people like chicken and dumplings. Okay, you're supposed to underline the conjunction, and Delcy, what would you say the conjunction is? She says and, all right? So underline and, and it is joining words, phrases, or sentences. You're supposed to write W, P, or S for which one of those. All right, you have chicken, dumplings. It's joining words, so you need to put a W in the blank. How about on number two? Either Alexis or Lauren will be there soon. Again, here is your um, double or a set of conjunctions. You have either and or. And it's joining words, phrases, or sentences. You have it's joining Alexis and Lauren. Those are words that you need to put a W again in the, in the blank. Number three. We wanted the longer tour, but we did not have enough money. The conjunction is, Emily, what would you say? But, that is correct. 
And are we joining sentences, phrases, or words? We wanted the longer tour, but we did not have enough money. It's joining sentences, so put a S on the blank. All right, so you guys do number four and jump to page 257. You're gonna do five through 10 the same way. Going down to write B, on notebook paper, write sentences using conjunctions as directed. All right, on these, they're giving you specific instructions on how to use conjunctions. And I'll give you a few ideas, and then I want you to write your own. You can follow off of mine, but don't use mine. Just use mine for an idea. Number one says use and to join two proper adjectives that modify the subject. All right, remember a proper word of any kind has a capital letter. So I have for my sentence, Snickers and Milky Way candy bars are sweet. All right, proper adjectives. This is describing candy or bars, describing the candy bars. This is proper adjective right here. Capital letters saying what kind of candy bars and it's joined by the conjunction and. You do something similar to what I have. Maybe you wanna say uh, what kind of toothpaste you like. Uh, maybe you wanna say, um, maybe there's a certain kind of sweatshirt you like. Um, something like that, but it needs to be a proper adjective. And you need to do these sentences on a separate sheet of paper and send them back when with your um, book. Number two says use but to join the two parts of a compound sentence. Okay, you're going to have two sentences hooked together with the conjunction but. What I put, we wanted to go to town but we were out of gas. Okay, something, something like that. Um, need to hook two sentences together with the conjunction but. Number three says use both <laughs> slash and to join two nouns used as the subject. All right, so um, what I wrote, I have both the cat and the dog. I'm not sure why I always say cat and dog, but it's just easiest. I could have said the camel and the rooster. Both the cat and the dog we're lazy. Okay? That's kind of what they want you to do. They want you to join two subjects together with both and and. Okay? That's just an idea for your sentence. You come up with your own. Number four says use and to join two adverbs that modify the verb. I wrote, the lady ran fast and skillfully. Okay, you're joining up two adverbs and you need to use the conjunction and. See what you can come up with. All right, then if you go down to go back, again, you're supposed to take your paper and diagram sentences two, three, six, and eight. And that would be in this from think A. Sentence two says either Alexis or Lauren will be there soon. All right, so, so we have we have a um, compound subject. That means we have a rocket ship, and in here is where you put. Um, your conjunction. It's either or, isn't it? Oh, odd is either, and I wrote neither. 
either and or. All right? Either Alexis or Lauren will be, now you have to decide what there and soon is, will be where? What answers the question where? How about an adverb? And will be there when? What answers the question when? How about an adverb? Will be there soon. All right, guys, I helped you out for that one. Um, number three, it's going to be a chair. You've got a compound sentence joined in with a chair with another compound sentence on the bottom. Number six is you have, again, you have two sentences hooked together with a conjunction, but you, and you again have a chair. So you're gonna have it like this with a chair, but the, uh, you have uh, several conjunctions. Let's see, they use either and or. So on your chair is how you would write this. Okay, this is sentence six. And sentence seven, I'm sorry, sentence eight, you have, you have a compound subject. You have three subjects, actually. You have a rocket ship. It's basically like that. You have red, white, blue. All right, and your conjunction is and. Okay, and then you'll finish it out here. Uh, but that gives you an idea how to diagram those sentences. Down on remember C, above each word in dark print, write S for subject. Okay, remember subject is usually at the beginning of a sentence. It's what the sentence is talking about. Then you have an object of preposition. Remember that is the, um, the noun at the end of a prepositional phrase. That is the object of the preposition. You have a direct object. Remember that you're gonna have subject, action verb, and then a direct object. It often answers the question, what? Uh, Miss Kim gave pencils to her class. Miss Kim gave what? Pencils. Pencils is your direct object. Always follows an action verb. Another one you're going to have is an indirect object. That answers the question to whom or for whom. If I would have said Miss Kim gave students pencils, students would have been the indirect object. I didn't give students, but I gave pencils to whom was to my students, okay? Indirect object always comes before a direct object, but it must have a action verb also. A predicate nominative always follows a linking verb. It's the noun after a linking verb, and it renames the subject. Miss Kim is my teacher. Teacher is your predicate nominative. It's, it's renaming Miss Kim. Okay, it always follows a linking verb. And then you have a direct address. Remember that's uh, a noun of somebody that you are directly talking to. Students, please come to the table. Students is a direct address. Okay, um, somebody that you're directly talking to. And that's all for today, for your lesson today. Do your very best and See you tomorrow.